Good morning, and thank you for taking some time out of your busy schedule to talk with me about a topic that, at times, can be highly controversial and somewhat provocative. Today, we're going to talk about toxic leadership. I'm sure that some of you will automatically form an opinion or reminisce back to a time where you had to deal with a, some form of toxic leader at the mere mention of the phrase. Leadership can make or break any organization or culture, and we tend to focus on traits and characteristics of successful leaders. But today, we're going to talk about those traits and characteristics of those toxic leaders. So, what is toxic leadership? What signs do I need to be aware of for toxic leadership? What are contributing factors that allow toxic leadership to exist and grow? How can I survive a toxic leader? These are all questions that we'll answer throughout today's podcast, and hopefully you walk away with a little better understanding of how toxic leadership can contribute to the overall success or failure of an endeavor. Let's jump right in. First, take a moment to think about a talk, what toxic leadership means to you. What traits, characteristics, and actions make up a toxic leader? Is it one trait, two traits, or possibly a combination of traits that contribute to the overall aura of that leader? If we ask 50 different people to define toxic leadership, it's safe to say we'll probably get 50 different answers. Even though this may be the case, we can extract several reliable characteristics that define a toxic leader. Three consistent traits of toxic leadership include a lack of concern for fellow employees, motivation by self-interest, and actions that negatively affect organizational culture. In other words, toxic leaders generally don't care about others, are willing to use others for their gain, and behave poorly among coworkers. That isn't, that isn't to say a toxic leader must have all these traits, but they generally have one, two, or a combination. Within these three main characteristics, we can also work to identify actions that help comprise the traits. Some secondary behaviors can be identified that can lead to toxic leadership. Generally, these are categorized as dark side behaviors. These behaviors can include skepticism, being narcissistic, a mischievous nature, leisurely actions, cautious, and a reserved personality. That's not to say that all these are bad characteristics all the time, but they can be frustrating and counterproductive to forming cohesive teams. Let's take a minute to discuss how these traits can promote toxic leadership. Skeptical. One can be mistrusting of others and are constantly questioning loyalty. Narcissism or narcissistic. Operate with a feeling of entitlement and privilege. They have trouble sharing credit for success and are easy to blame for other failures. Mischievous nature. Tend to push the envelope to see how much they can get away with. They also can be, be charismatic and believe they can talk their way out of most trouble. Leisurely tend to procrastinate, and they only fulfill requests that are in line with their own agenda. Cautious, tend to take an overly long time to make decisions or are in constant fear of making a poor choice, past remaining incomplete for long periods of time. And finally, reserved, can become withdrawn when pressure or deadlines come closer. They're not concerned with staff well-being and become hard to contact. <clears throat> Although these traits can have limited upside, the downside is generally more of a slippery slope. Too much dark side behavior can create a toxic environment but too little can create an environment of ignorance. It's up to us to find a healthy balance that is a good fit for our team. Now that we have an understanding of toxic leadership and some accompanying behaviors, let's expand on some contributing factors of that toxic leadership model. Although there can be thousands of situational characteristics that can contribute to toxic leadership, one key characteristic seems, to, seems constant to some degree in any toxic leadership culture. That common trait is Narcissism. Narcissism can be used as a, sen as a sense of entitlement where the leader does not acknowledge significant contributions by team members and operates with a sense of privilege. A narcissistic leader can be detrimental to productivity and employee health and well-being. We know that these leaders can remain in power for long periods of time due to positive results that they may obtain. Organizations can also share blame here as they turn a blind eye to these behaviors if seemingly positive contributions are being achieved. Common themes of narcissistic leaders include aggression, scream, threaten, yell, elevated entitlement. You wouldn't understand. I'm just better than you. Overconfidence. Of course I'm right. And finally, poor emotional aware, awareness. Just do it because I'm the boss. Can each of you think of a leader that exhibited these characteristics? Someone that barks out orders, doesn't acknowledge opinions, or is unaware of how their behaviors or words affect other people? Do you remember how these people made you feel at the time? Not very good, I assume. Great leaders always adhere to the adage of, think before you speak. 
Although the leader may share the majority of the blame in a toxic environment, there are also other factors that can contribute and allow the situation to exist. As we've talked about so far, toxic leaders can have certain characteristics that cause detrimental culture, but is there anything else? Can the people surrounding the leader be to blame? Can the environment or industry be to blame? Who allows toxic behaviors to exist? Let's take a look at some contributing aspects. There are three widely recognized factors that make up a toxic culture known as, <clears throat> known as the toxic triangle. The triangle examines three axes that promote a toxic leader. These include the leader, the follower, and the environment. Each can share blame in the promotion of a toxic situation. We've talked about how the leader can have a negative effect in the environment, but now let's take a look at the follower and, and the environment. Followers can be placed in a difficult relationship with leaders. As we're all followers in some respect, we know employees generally have two options, stay or leave. Unfortunately, it's not always easy to leave, especially in a workplace environment. As we navigate through a situation, we generally fall into two categories of followers, a conformer, <clears throat> a conformer or a colluder. Conformers follow a toxic leader out of fear and do not realize the power they may have to create some change. They can sometimes remain in this role for long periods of time due to their inability to realize they can create that change. This enables a toxic leader to operate on their own agenda. The second follower is known as the colluder. The colluder will tolerate a toxic relationship to reap the benefits of their position. They acknowledge that the leader's behavior is poor, but it can have ancillary benefits, and much like the toxic leader, they have their own agenda. This also enables the leader to continue with the toxic behavior. It can also be argued that all followers have some sort of need for inclusion, hence they keep moving forward with a toxic leader. The last piece of the toxic triangle is the environment. This is the setting, industry, or situation that does not have proper checks and balances to prevent toxic leadership. Environmental traits such as instability, lack of corporate guidance, poor values, and absentee oversight can lead to an environment conducive to toxic leadership. A toxic culture cannot exist without an environment that allows poor behaviors and fails to correct them. So, what can we do about toxic leaders? Although there's no clear-cut answer for every situation, there are some basic models that organizations can implement to help quell toxic situations. <clears throat> Although change can be difficult and laborious, it is possible to correct cultural deficiencies. Several key factors include a 360 degree view of leaders. Anonymous reviews of a leader from multiple levels is extremely valuable. A democratic leadership process. Having peers select leadership personnel is highly advantageous to team synergy. Accountability opportunities. Having the ability to voice opinions on leadership promotes transparency and clarity. And finally, a strong human resources department. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's discussion and realized some signs of toxic leadership and limited ways to prevent it. I wish you the best of luck in your leadership endeavor and hope you realize how your actions and influences help persuade others.